Canada's basic military qualification training. Isn't that a mouthful? Let's take a look. Let's go. Why are we backwards this morning? This week on Troop Duty Valor. This is what I'm talking about. Five recruits face the mud, <laughs> sweat, and tears of Canadian... So you have 14 weeks, right? So this is boot camp, basic training for the Canadian military. Now let's take a look at it. A lot of you guys have asked for it, so why not take a look at how Canada does it, our neighbors to the north. This is basic military qualification training. The Tongue twister. The challenge of their lives. This is your mission! Basic training. Adventure for some. Nightmare for others. If you want to join the military, you've got to go through BMQ. Canadian Forces Leadership and Recruit School in saint jean sur richelieu Quebec is where it all happens. Their motto, learn to serve. Boy, this announcer's a drama queen. A nightmare for some. I mean, it's boot camp. It's not fun because you're young and dumb. Let's see. This is the saint jean Garrison. And the she didn't grin her face. And we come here for BMQ, which is basic military qualification. Basic training is a requirement of Ooh, every soldier in the CF. They must have this qualification. You cannot go any further with them. When you get here and you pull up in the cab, you start your heart starts pounding like crazy because you really, you know. You it looks like the Soviet embassy in Havana. It's definitely not a pretty building. That's not the point, right? Kind of second guess your your uh, yourself, you know. Okay, this is it. Do I really want to walk through those doors or not? God, she's old. Um, most All right, question for you door. guys, my Canadian friends. What's the age max on this? I did some homework on it, but I didn't get to the age max because that was an old lady for boot camp, right? Um, these kids look young, but she looked like she was relatively on the old side of things for boot camp. And then it starts. Yes, Sergeant! What? The yelling starts, the, uh, the marching, the whole bit. So then you're standing there and it's like, holy shit. What have I done? We even set up a time so you can buy this stuff. Out front here right now, whoever needs stuff, mechanics. Over here! It's getting after him already. Follow Master Corporal Gusset, he'll take you there. Where you are. Get him up. Your heads aren't that heavy. It started right from the beginning. We were strictly regimented, marching everywhere. I uh, shaved off my hair. Uh, I had to start shaving every day. You're getting a haircut <laughs> for a couple of reasons. Boy, this guy, what did he think he was getting to? He had to get up on time, shave his face, get a haircut. You know, I know they can make anybody look like an idiot, like a dumbass, but he definitely fit the bill. <laughs> one is for hygiene. That is the most important one. You don't have to take care of it. Just quick, get up, shower, you're done. The other reason is, is because when you're in the field, why is he telling them? And you're in combat, they can't take advantage of something like this and grab it and this. And once they have the control of your head, the rest of the body will follow. If your hair is extremely short, there's nothing for them to grab onto to throw you to the ground and take your life. Your left hand is on the strap, the bottom of the. All right, that's the first time I've heard that one. So they shave your head in the military or in boot camp. You keep short hair to keep the enemy from grabbing your hair. Hmm. I'm going to say if it gets to that point, and that's truly the reason, which I don't think it is, um, things have gone really bad. It's touching canvas. This is how you will carry your CC bag. Understood? I like yes, that. Sergeant. Are we clear? Yes, Sergeant. Miss home? No, Sergeant. You wanna go home? No, Sergeant. I can get you home. No, thank you, you Sergeant. You don't have to be here. I wanna be here, Sergeant. You can go sit down with mom and dad. No, thank you, Sergeant. No? No, Sergeant. Wife, maybe? Girlfriend? All, all of these other platoons marching around, you know, very disappointed. All right, so let's get back to the premise that the instructor had. You wanna keep the hair short, right? In case the enemy goes to pull it in a hand-to-hand -hand combat. But yet, that lady had her hair long. So, I said this in another video. Let's shave all the heads for equality and to protect against the enemy grabbing your hair. 
go back a little bit, you'll see him mentioning that. And then just like, oh, how am I ever going to get to being at that point? And... Less than 24 hours in, still wearing their civvies, new recruits get their first taste of life on the other side. They call this week zero. Week zero is very nerve wracking for them because it's the first time a lot of these people have been away from their parents for the very first time, away from their wives, their family, their children, away from home. And they have guys like us and uh, other instructors who are telling them, no, this is how it's going to be now. And a lot of these kids have never made their beds before, have never done laundry before, never sewn before. And we're going to teach them that. That's very overwhelming for them. Now, if you grew up in a, we'll call it a strict household, right? Where you had to make your bed. You had to do your own wash. You had to take care of shit. It's not a big deal doing the basics that he, most people do. I did. My mother was very strict. She had a military father. So to me, that part of it was super easy. You know, you shave your face, you make your bed, you show up on time. For some people, not saying the Canadians, but some people, it's a big issue. Especially in this scenario, it looks like they're giving them a little more flexibility than, say... You know, my experience is the Marine Corps boot camp where they're screaming and yelling and every minute of the day, you're busy and there is no telephones. I don't know if they've got it here or television. Let's keep going. Nothing like I expected. If you want part two, put it in the comments. Of all, fitness levels, uh, of all uh, backgrounds from one side of the country to the other. Approximately every year, there's about 7,000 uh, personnel that go through the school, uh, be it non-commissioned members or uh, candidates as well. Taking an individual who has never seen military life and after 13 weeks having them as a full-fledged military member uh, within the Canadian Armed Forces. That's basic training to me. It's, uh, it's a total life transformation, really. Um, it takes a I will admit, it is amazing what they can accomplish. Canadians everywhere around the world in 13 weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, during wartime, 8 weeks, how they can get somebody who's totally clueless with respect to the military and get them operating somewhat as an organization, somewhat as a team, understanding quite a few things. It's amazing what you can accomplish. You yank away the television, yank away a bunch of free time, and you stress somebody. It's amazing how quickly people can adapt. The courage for someone to walk through that door. And courage isn't all it takes. It's the old lady Those again. Those who make it through the first 24 hours at St. Jean Garrison face another test. 24 hours into basic training. It's time to see who's got what it takes and who doesn't. The express test evaluates stress, stamina, and strength of new huh. recruits. Express test, they call it. It's four tests. First test is a 20 meter shuttle run. Second test is the hand grips. After that, we go with push up and sit up. Do you have any questions so far? No, no. no. So we're going to take your pressure, high blood pressure and your pulse for the beginning. And when it's done, you sit over there in four ranks with your team. This is their initial physical training. If they fail two of the three strength tests, they will be recoursed to what we call the RFT, the Remedial Fitness Training Program. They will then have 90 days to bring themselves back up into... We used to call that the pork chop platoon. So I think he called the remedial training platoon, whatever. It's where the fat bodies went who couldn't do the exercises. Hate to be so crass, but it's just what it is, right? Shape, and then they'd be repositioned back into another platoon. They're looking, they're looking pretty good so this far. This is interesting. Usually they're, they're a little bit nervous for that test, for the high pressure in the post, but so far they're looking pretty good. Right now, they're probably pretty anxious or pretty nervous. We've been we've been telling them, we give them a schedule, okay, this is your PT test, and if you don't fall within the normal uh, parameters that we require of a uh, CF soldier, then this way you will be removed from this group, then you'll have to start over with another group. It's pretty disheartening for a lot of the new troopies because they've just gotten to know these people, even though it's only been from 48 hours to, to whatever, to, to the, at that point, depending on the schedule, they've bonded quite, quite well with each other because this is all they know this is this is their bunk buddy this is the first person they met and they've become uh, uh, quite attached to each other it's elbows in the front so it looks like they take your pulse to start with and your blood pressure right so they take that they stress you exercise they give you time to take it again to see how quickly you recover 
Good idea. That tells you what kind of shape you're in, right? So if you're in good shape and you walk up two flights of stairs, in a minute your heart rate's going to go down, your pulse is going to go down. If you're out of shape, it's going to stay up because you're out of shape. I don't know that it really matters. If you can do the exercises and your pulse is still high and your heart rate's still high, does that really matter in the scheme of things? Maybe it doesn't happen. What do you guys think? Put that in the comments. And it's going up at the top of your knee. And when it's going down, your shoulders must touch the floor. Physically, it's tough, tough on their bodies. Uh, there are a number of criteria that they got to meet to stay within the platoon. But the biggest determining factor to remove them from the whole training program, actually right off base, is, is mental. It's all up to them. They may determine that at some point that this is too much stress on myself mentally or this is too much stress on myself, on my body as a whole, and I'm just had enough. The test starts in five seconds. Five. Well, gauging the level of stress for somebody who's not used to stress, so he's saying, hey, they determine it's too much stress on them. Well, of course it is. When you've been puffing cigarettes and eating bonbons on the couch, it may be too much stress for a lot of Americans. I don't know that that's the best barometer to say, well, if it's too much stress for me, I want to quit. Don't know that's the case here, but it sure sounds like. What do you guys know about that? Can you just quit this program? I don't think you should be able to in the beginning, at least, because there'll be a lot of quitters. It's not they're not going to get to do what they want. Four, three, two, one. The test is underway. How's this little jog for? Yeah, I'm really pleased. All right. I don't know what that was. Like, I've seen old people run faster. I'm not sure exactly what that was a test of. Can they jog slightly in an air-conditioned gymnasium? Yes. All right, let's keep watching. Five. You're alive. That's all there is. Congratulations, everyone. What's going to happen now? Yeah. Now let's What's clap. Yay. Gonna Good job. Another car over there and take a shower. I'm going to meet you in the I don't know what that was. For the briefing, the last briefing. The CF Express test is over. The recruits hit the showers. The results. All right, maybe I missed something. Maybe I'm being too hard. Maybe I'm an old fart. That didn't seem like much to me. They did some sit-ups, some push-ups, and did a little jog. All right. Um, I don't know what that's. They're human. <laughs> they're, they're not 50 years old and crippled. I'm not sure what that's supposed to test. Now, I know this gets harder, but that was pretty soft. Got to be honest. Briefing awaits. A little encouragement gets them moving. Whack him that stick, man. Let's go. Get a move on in there. Tell him to get moving. We're going to be retest on a 10 weeks. Okay? Now, don't worry. You Every didn't make week, it, Lazy. It's the same. Dozens of new recruits arrive at St. Jean Garrison. Okay, it's back, coach. Yes, Within 24 hours, some don't make the cut physically. Some don't make it mentally. Wow. Definitely you cry a lot that weekend. You just need to get a hold of your family, need their support through it all. Oh, wow. That first week was... I had this discussion this morning on the live stream I do on Twitch. And the question was, or the comment I had was, if my children are in the military and they're going to be a logistics person, specialist... I want them trained to the hardest, highest standard possible. I don't care what service they're in. Why? Because they get deployed and overseas, and for God forbid, they got to pick up a rifle, do something, get on a convoy because they need a body. I want them trained to that level. Again, don't care what their job is. I want training to be as hard as possible so that they're safe as possible. I'm looking at this from a parent standpoint. So that's somewhere where my comments come from. You know, To protect that person, in this case, the Canadian recruit, I want them trained to the highest possible standard, hard as hell. I don't care if their job is pushing papers, but if necessary, they know they've got the willpower and the steam, right? A lot of what have I gotten myself into mixed with... Going to Costco. Fear and excitement. 
If you want more videos like this, look at the card above. Thanks for watching.